Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video, should you color grade your Sony ZV-1 footage? And if you should, what are the best ways to do it? Because depending on what you shoot, there's lots of different tips and tricks that I've got, especially around skin tones that you need to apply to get the best looking image from the Sony ZV-1. I promise this is really easy to do. In this example, I'm going to use Adobe Premiere, but that's the same across Vinci or anything else. Same ideas apply. This isn't just exclusive to Premiere Pro. Today's video is sponsored by my good friends at Epidemic Sound. Now I'm going to talk more about Epidemic Sound in a while. I've got a really cool trick about Epidemic Sound when it comes to color grading. I know you're thinking, Vic, sound, color grading, what the heck have they got to do with anything to do with color grading? Well, it's going to up your game when it comes to choosing music for any of your videos with Epidemic Sound, but more on that in a bit. So let's get into this color grading tutorial. Okay, we've got a scene here. It's 1920 by 1080. I've got it slowed down. It's this little scene here in West Cork. It's like 120p from the Sony ZV-1. So we can see a couple of different things here on our scopes. If you don't see Lumetri scopes, go to Window, Go to Lumetri Scopes, make sure it's ticked. Whatever software you're using, if it's worth its salt, from Final Cut to DaVinci, you're gonna find scopes in there and they're really useful to helping you grade an amazing looking clip. So, come on. So here, up here, 100, anything that's above that means it's clipping. So what does that mean? It means that you lose the data in the brightest parts of the image, which is also known as the highlights. Down here, once we get to zero, once you go under zero, you're crushing the blacks, which is a really cool art you think to say, you're crushing the blacks but you're losing data as well. So keep that in mind. And those dark parts are called the shadows. And then in the middle is the midtones. So let's go to basic correction here. Let's take a look at our white balance. Of course, white balance should always be set in camera, right? But you did that anyway. But just to be doubly safe, find somewhere that's not exactly white, but it's kind of gray. And we can see here, if we go before and after, it's just making things that little bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the actual color correction first, and then we're gonna do the color grade. So I'm gonna look at the contrast here. I'm gonna bring that up slightly. I'm gonna bring down the highlights. And as you can see, once we bring down the highlights, we're bringing back some of the details in the brighter parts of the image. And with the shadows, of course, if we raise them up too much, we're really kind of dragging it up. And because this was shot in one of the log profiles, on the Sony ZV-1, it means that we've got a lot of room to play with and try and get the most dynamic range out of this tiny camera. I'm gonna bring my shadows as down as far as I can go. I'm also gonna bring my blacks down a little bit so we can see now we're getting somewhere from the before and after. So to me, eyeballing this, and you should never really eyeball it, but do anyway because your eyes don't light, your monitor might though. We can see that it's a bit too little detail in the shadow, so I'm bringing this up slightly. And here's the thing, when it comes to color grading and color correction, the slightest little movement can make the biggest difference. So we don't want to go for something that's going to melt people's minds. We want to do something that's nice. Keep that in mind, it's nice, it's subtle. The best color grades, color corrections, subtle. I'm kind of happy enough with how this looks right about now, so I'm going to go down to where the magic starts to really happen. And I'm talking about the curves. So there's RGB curves and there's hue saturation curves, and both are very important. There's a lot of big name YouTubers use both of these, but one in particular is where you add the magic secret sauce that if you want to get a particular look, it's really found in the RGB curves, particularly in the reds. I'm gonna click on this red line. And again, this is the bright part. These are the shadows, the dark parts. And what we wanna do is we wanna bring some green into the shadows, greens and blues into the shadows a little bit. So I'm gonna drag over here on the bottom left, bring this over, bring this one down. As you can see, we turn this on and off. We're starting to make a good, nice, subtle change. So we've got a lot of greens in here into the shadows, which is what we're kind of going for. This moody, hate to use the look, but it's orange and teal. A lot of people love this look. It's quite cinematic. So this is where we're at. Now I'm going to leave the rest of these alone. We can use the Luma one here for some contrast extra if we want, but I'm going to leave that off. Now let's jump into the hue saturation curves. I know the hue saturation curves thing is like, oh my God, there's boxes and there's lines and it's like, <laughs> It's fine, okay? Trust me, this is really easy. So I'm gonna go through each one that you need to use. Hue versus saturation, essentially what this is, is kind of the colors of the image. How bright are they? How vibrant are they? So for example, the greens here, I want to desaturate my greens. So let's spread them out a little bit. And then if we drag this one down here, we can see 
Now that's an extreme case, but they're going gray because there is no color. I'm gonna bring this over another little bit here, bring this down. So as we can see the before and after. So that's still a little bit too desaturated. So let's bring it up a little bit. Let's bring this one over and then the hue. So the color, so we can change the color. So let's make these pieces of grass a little bit more orangey and yellow. So I'm gonna select the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna to click here. And then if we select the middle one, we can change these to whatever color we want. Not necessarily this color, but let's just bring them up a notch. As we can see we're making subtle differences and we can spread this out a little bit more. So it's affecting more of our actual grass. So as we can see now we're going all, more or less all the grass. So we're shifting the greens to a little bit more orange. The hue versus luma is how dark a particular hue is. So I'm gonna select the eyedropper tool here, give you guys an example. And we can really crush that down, which we're not gonna do because it just looks awful. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it alone. However, the luma versus sat, I wanna everything here on the edges slow, like the white parts, I want them to be white. I don't want a little color cast in there. So by doing this, you remove that possibility. It's tiny, it's very, very subtle, but it's something that good practice to do. The rest of them, I'm gonna leave them alone, but I'm gonna come back up here to the hue versus hue and I'm gonna get my sky. And we wanna make this a little bit more teal. And I wanna saturate it a little bit more as well. We want it a little bit more vibrant so we can bring this up. Keep in mind though, this is 8-bit color, which means we have a lot of color to play with, but compared to 10-bit colors, which is on other cameras, not the Sony ZV-1, you can really push the colors around, but we're limited to what we can do here. But again, keep an eye on it. If things start looking weird, then yeah, they're weird, so don't, right? Sometimes I like to darken the sky a little bit to give more contrast, so that's where we can use the Hue versus Luma. But as you can see here is a great example of 8-bit color really starting to fall apart. So there's not a lot we can do, but we can just bring it down a smidge. That's a word, right? Smidge. And then finally, let's go up here to our creative. And because this was kind of shot in a log profile, let's go back to our basic correction. Let's bring our saturation up to 120. Let's take a look at our color balance again here and our temperature. I want to warm this up a little bit more. And now if we go from before to after, you can see that we've done something really sweet looking. And then just as a kind of a final little sprinkling of magic on top of all of this, let's put on a tiny little bit of a vignette so we can bring a little bit more focus to what we're looking at. So generally I come down to about minus 1, 0.1, minus 0.2, and then before and after. And that's it. So that's the basics. But hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Skin tones, this ain't gonna work in skin tones. Skin tones are a totally different thing. And the better your skin tones look, then that really is a great sign that you have some idea of what you're doing. And keeping in mind, being like color grading and color correction, that's a full-time job in Hollywood. So us folks here, like we're only having the best go at it. You can get really good at it and you're all working with the same tools, but keep in mind, this is somebody's full-time job, a colorist on a Hollywood production or a bunch of colorists to get an amazing look. That's not to say you and I can't do it because as you can see, we are doing it. And this is just my way of doing it. There's a million other ways of doing it. And what I like may not be what you like, but I'm helping you guys get the basics here so you can start fiddling around, moving colors around, moving looks around and, and get the image that you want from your Sony ZV-1 footage. Now, before I get into the skin tones, let me tell you what I do with Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound has a gigantic library of music and sound effects. They've got like over 90,000 sound effects, which is a lot of sound effects. So what I do with Epidemic Sound when I'm color grading, with the exception of this time here, because I'm talking to you guys, is I put on all either trending tracks, their latest tracks, or I just pick a genre, and I just have this music on in the background while I'm color grading and working and stuff where I don't need the audio from the video that I'm working on. And I find this great for color grading because you've got all these new tracks coming in. There's a huge selection of new tracks in Epidemic all the time. And then if I find something, I go, oh, I like that. What is it? And then I save it. So I save it to a playlist or I just save it to my favorites in Epidemic Sound. And then when it comes to making a new video, I've got a whole ton of music that is ready to go. And then I just don't have to spend time looking for more music for that particular video. So this is a really helpful tip if you do use Epidemic Sound. It's just, you've got all this amazing music that's just built up and you've got it ready to go. That's what I do all the time 
while I'm grading my stuff, because it's probably the last step of the process for me is color grading the video. I'll throw on epidemic sound and I'll just have all these tracks blaring away in my ears and start making notes of what I want. I've used epidemic sound for years. In fact, every sound effect and piece of music that I've had in the video for the last couple of years, both here and professionally, have all come from epidemic sound. So if you guys want to see and want to hear how good things can be with epidemic sound and how beneficial it can be, there's a link in the description. Let's get into skin tones. Skin tones are a completely different animal and it's only kind of recently that I started figuring out how to get skin tones somewhat okay looking. And it is a good thing that if you can nail your skin tones in camera and in the post, then it looks really good. This clip here of me, as you can see, this I think was shot in HLG2 on the Sony ZV-1. And what I want to do here is we want to first get a better frame because I don't like that frame. Let's go with this one. Now, where the magic of skin tones happens in Premiere, it's slightly different than other programs, but the idea is the exact same. It's HSL secondary. Alrighty, and we want our scopes up here. In fact, this particular scope or vector scope, I want to make this bigger so you guys can see exactly what is happening. So what we want to do here is we just want to work with our skin tones and get it right. Okay, now, how do we do that? Easy. There's a little eyedropper tool here. I'm going to select it, click on my skin. Let's select the plus symbol here. Let's get some more in. Let's go to our denoise, let's push it up so it denoises everything and then we can blur what we have. Now let's add some more here, just a little bit. And while it's digging in and bleed into the actual desk here, I'm not too worried about that. So the skin tones generally live in the mid-tones. So if we go down to correction here, we select the three colors or the three little circles, we get our shadows, highlights, and mid-tones. We also can work with our temperature, tint, contrast, we can sharpen it, and we can use some saturation as well. So as you can see, we're now only working with what's there. Now that's an extreme example, right? But that's how it works. So there's different trains of thought on how to get the skin tone correct. And if we see this line here, it's like at 11 o'clock, but this line, that is our perfect skin tone. That is the skin tone line. Take my word for it, that's what it's called, it's the skin tone line. So what we want is our colors here to be more or less bang on this line. And for me, mine kind of are, but as we can see, if we start moving our mid-tones, that starts moving away from that particular line. So let's see how we can do it here. Let's bring it back. And then with the sliders here, we can decrease and we can increase if we want the actual volume, the levels. Same with the shadows. We can a little bit of blue into the shadows if needs be. But again, we want our mid-tones to be absolutely as good as we can get them. Then we can sharpen it, add a little bit of contrast, saturate it up a little bit. And then if we turn off the color in gray, you can see by turning off Lumetri color, we've got something that's a lot more appealing and more visually recognizable to the brain. It's not washed out, it's kind of healthy looking, as we'd say. And then of course we can just bring the saturation up. And once we're in the HSL secondary, we're only working with those colors that we have selected. Now it doesn't have to be skin tones, you can do with any color, for example, if we wanted to change something else, we can do that. But for this example, it's skin tones. Now, should you actually color grade every single piece of footage? Look, here's the thing, all right? And this is really, really, really super important. No matter how good your color grade looks, it's not going to hide or shy away from the fact that the video could be crap. So if the story don't work, if there is no story, if it's just random stuff, then it's just a bunch of random clips that are nicely color graded. And the grades that you can pull out can be limited to or restricted even to the actual profiles that you use. So your picture profile within the Sony ZV-1, skin tones look really good with the picture profile turned off. But if you want to squeeze a little bit more dynamic range out of the camera, then something like HLG2, S-Log2, S-Log3, but S-Log3 and the, the log profiles are a completely different kettle of fish as we would say here, meaning they're overly complicated to expose for and get things looking amazing. But if you don't have a go, you won't know. So get in and fiddle about and see how you can get on with those. But for me, HLG2 is kind of the, 
the one that I use all the time. And there's sometimes I just forget to turn on and turn off picture profile and the image quality is really, really good. But what I would say to you guys is this is a great skill that you can actually learn. It can help your footage look a little bit different from everybody else and level things up. And that's what it's all about. However, again, story is key. Happy color grading in this video here is going to really up your game when it comes to the Sony ZV-1. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop fighting for yourself. Yeah, boy!